Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, in this case, to uh, our new guest today, uh, Holland, to the Think Bamboo podcast. Welcome. It's good to be here, JJ. Thank you for all the work you do promoting bamboo. Well, thank you for all the stuff you create with bamboo, man. Um, amazing to have you here. Um, really excited. Um, let's deep dive quickly into um, presentation you shared with, with us here uh, previously so that our um, spectators and listeners have a, have a quick overview of, of like the very broad um, um, things you create with Bamboo. So um, I think a very special um, kind of approach you have is also like on education. Maybe you can um, share some keywords here. We have a Bamboo classroom you, you build in, in Vietnam, right? Yeah, this is located in Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam. It's built for a uh, international kindergarten and preschool. Very awesome. fun project to be working on, uh, involving a lot of concepts that I'm really get excited about, which the primary ones being education and bamboo. And getting to fuse these was uh, absolute joy. <laughs> awesome, man! I, I I love the the I I love the the visuals. I can really imagine this is a very uh, more positive. Um, like um um experience for for the kids you know to discover the world and all that so uh, <laughs> really cool <laughs> um then a we lot have of inspired a, children yeah yeah that's what we need like <laughs> right <laughs> we need to get them uh happy and inspired um then it was like uh, you do a lot of um events um not just in 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 vietnam but also in thailand and and like all of Asia, right? With yeah, mostly bamboo. We've done projects in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Cambodia, in Singapore. Uh, we've worked as designers for projects in South America, and, um, Australia, even in this India. Is uh, and hope to cool, be in more cool locations go. later this year. Probably spell it wrong. <laughs> this one being a, a really great example of a recent structure we did. We actually mm -hmm. did two of these. Um, I'm really fortunate to work with Budweiser and Air Asia, who are really on board for promoting sustainable event solutions. And this is something we often are trying to do in our event work is show alternative ways to set up event structures that are more sustainable. So this structure is 100% natural material. Um, all the shade covers made in Vietnam, all the bamboo from Thailand. And it was for Rolling Loud uh, Thailand, which is the largest rap and um like alternative music event we got to see cardi mm. b from our bamboo structure which is a pretty strange <laughs> experience and something i didn't expect even uh wow. travis scott who <laughs> sitting there wow so lots of good uh, vibes <laughs> great vibes. awesome it was a space for the guests to come and relax between the shows have a beer listen to some music and we were just very excited to see that Budweiser and Air Asia were really motivated to involve bamboo with their their site installation, which is a, I can a imagine, trend I mean, we're seeing more and more and with uh, brands across Thailand. That's pretty cool, and it's still kind of uh, highly innovative <clears throat> uh, because uh, yeah, the the big brands need like m most of the time more time to to see trends, <laughs> real trends. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah. So you have like a lot of stuff. I don't want to um, um, keep too much time, but it's really, I mean, I, I, I love the merge you do with, with art and how you use bamboo there. So um, let's just um, go back to um, directly here. Here we go. Okay, man. So um, this, I, I, I love it. I mean, <laughs> I think uh, this is it. Um, so the big question here is, I mean, um, you're, you're from the U S right. And, um, <laughs> yeah. originally, and, originally from the U S, uh, grew up in, in Chicago area, a little bit in the UK. Uh, but, but my father there, is a scientist. So as a young person, I was following the family a lot, but originally from the U S. Wow. And and now you're like for over five eight years I think in in Asia right Vietnam like is your um, yeah yeah so how did you get there coming uh, we'll get used <laughs> to this lag time <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah 
Well, my journey with bamboo started uh, over a decade ago when I was working as an artist in Baltimore. And at that time, I was doing a lot of industrial sculptures using metal, doing a lot of painting. Um, my my undergrad degrees are in fine art. So I was working like a lot of mold casting. Uh, my goal is to learn as many material techniques as possible. And mm -hmm. if you're working with metal, you're working with wood, and then you find bamboo, it becomes a very inspiring material. But the first time I got introduced to bamboo was when I did a residency program in, in South Korea. And I was working, mm. I was paired with another uh, artist, uh, a Korean artist, mm -hmm. and we had to work together to develop projects about the development in Korea. And during this time, we had a, a, a girl down the hall from our studio who was working with traditional Korean instruments. And her studio Music was instruments. covered, yeah, with bamboo, covered wow. in bamboo instruments. And so every day wow. we're working on mold, mold making, and metal working down the hall, listening to this beautiful sound of bamboo instruments coming down. And she was the first one who really introduced me, and I saw how versatile the material could be. And then I put bamboo on pause for many years. Um, was back in the U.S. working with industrial materials again, and I think I just got very frustrated with the art making process and how much waste materials involved with it. And so mm -hmm. I was looking for what are natural alternatives. And at the time, I was living in Baltimore. I was not surrounded by a large quantity of natural material options unless they came from a hardware store or processed. And I wanted to go somewhere where there was more natural materials. And I remember being in Korea and really opening up to the natural material industrialization of, of the entire, all of Asia. And mm -hmm. looking into where is this space in the world where you're going to find like an uprising of new technique, new methods. And... Vietnam really fell into this pocket as a place where it'd be perfect for me to go. And I just wanted to explore and get more options on what kind of natural materials are in my backyard. And Vietnam is full of these options. And you mentioned earlier um, to me that also regarding Vietnam, it's like, it's, it's not the, the quantity, but it's uh, more the quality of bamboo you find there, right? Yeah. Uh, well, Vietnam is a rising industrial country. Uh, the amount of industry building up here is quite expansive. And Vietnam's manufacturing industry really focuses on quality. Like if you go into That's REI cool. right now, or you go into high-end camping stores, or you're even looking for like nice quality Doc Martens or work boots or PPE supplies, most of all this stuff is manufactured in Vietnam. And the market here wow. is really sculpted on creating quality products, quality goods, and skilled uh, skilled labor. And it's uh, the natural wow. material market here is quite diverse and not so explored. And I saw an opportunity to ask questions and learn as much as I could. Wow. So you got basically from, from Baltimore to, to uh, <clears throat> um, South Korea and then to, to Vietnam. Yeah, and then to Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. I've now been in Vietnam for about eight years, exploring bamboo and the natural materials wow. here all across the country. And and really working a lot, um, as I've seen with um, with installations and um, kind of uh, hacking the, the system, um, working, um, having this, this carte blanche, right, of, uh, of, of, do, of creating art and being able to use... Um, bamboo bamboo structures bamboo uh, or whatever material you want but ob obviously you're you're mostly focusing on on bamboo um but it, um yeah so maybe you can you can also share some insights there um um regarding your approach well my main approach was to try to just implement any natural material and mm -hmm. The more I worked with bamboo, the more diversity the material offered, the, the different things you can do with it. it. It surprises me still every day. And I'm constantly learning more and more things about bamboo. It's uh, been a very solitary pursuit in some ways. I, I've actually never taken a bamboo workshop or pro workshop. professional bamboo education class. The majority of my bamboo education has been getting on a motorcycle, 
driving into the mountains of Vietnam and just asking questions, asking farmers, is there any wow. one who weaves baskets here? Is there any bamboo farms here? And just being pointed in different directions until eventually you find that, that man who has a whole factory making bamboo baskets or that farmer who has a massive field on the mountainside and is treating bamboo and trying to figure out what are the new methods. And wow. when I first moved to Vietnam, I only found around three to five like major bamboo manufacturers here. And since mm -hmm. then, the Vietnamese government has put a lot of incentives to build the bamboo industry in Vietnam and to increase it, mm. leading to more and more development with bamboo and natural material uh, across the country. And I've been here Does to kind of watch a lot of that rise. Does that have something to do with, with Inbar, like focusing on, on, on growing the, the market of bamboo in Asia? Or is it like a parallel effect um, just happening because uh, we need more uh, regenerative uh, materials and there is more demand? What, what do you think? <laughs> I think there's a, it's both all those reasons, I would say. Uh, Everybody in Vietnam is motivated to grow the bamboo industry for a different reason. Uh, some wow. for sustainability focus, some for industrial focus, um, mm -hmm. some just because it is a, a better crop for their land. Uh, a lot of the forests in Vietnam were cut down. There's Degrade. a lot of legal harvesting and bamboo is very abundant here and it doesn't require that level of deforestation. So it's a very successful crop for farmers to focus on. And it's becoming is, a major there, export for Vietnam. And, and, and I was just like kind of wondering, is there still like um, an impact of, of the Vietnam War, of all this bombing and glyphosate and uh, all these chemicals which have been like poured there? Is there like still some, some, some I mean, it's been a while, but uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone has a different, uh, a different experience with that across the country. Mm -hmm. But in my experience here, this is something that's very much in the past. Vietnam's looking to the future, and I've never awesome. experienced any kind of any kind of um, I don't know aggression or feelings of uh, bias towards me as an American. Vietnam's very much like we won that war. Everything's fine now. <laughs> wow, so, <laughs> so we're, cool. We're so in a good cool. position. So on on a people um, uh, perspective, but but what about I mean um, nature? I, I was reading like they did like carpet bombing of of glyphosate like on thousands, hundred thousands of hectare. Is that like is, is there something growing there? Is bamboo like taken back there, or 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 is it just like I, I can't bamboo imagine. Is I haven't seen. <laughs> bamboo is over the entire country, and yeah, there's a lot of deforestation. I and mean, there's a major war here. Vietnam had more bombs dropped on it than World War One and World War Two combined. It's wow. it was a a different place back then. But uh, in terms of carpet bombing, these kinds of things, it's um, I don't know, it's not something that's very much in the topic in the modern Vietnam. Mm -hmm. It's something understand. that's really in the past. Yeah, I understand. And and Holland, um, can you share something regarding um, the we also talked previously about that the the, the high skilled um, workers you have or you can find in in Vietnam because having this rich ancient um, bamboo uh, knowledge, right? This is a, a mm. very different approach than uh, if you go to uh, Germany or or the U.S. where where um, it's really a challenge, I think, to find the bamboo building specialist. <laughs> yeah, where the perception is, it's panda food. Uh, <laughs> bamboo in Vietnam is is part of the culture for forever. It's it's integrated everywhere. If you walk around Vietnam, there is bamboo used in daily life in every corner of the country. One of the things that I love is how bamboo has changed and been used in Vietnam with the rise of new technology. It's something I'm also mm -hmm. inspired by here. Um, in the past, before like satellite dishes and there's just radio antennas. You would go out mm -hmm. to cities in Vietnam and see thousands of bamboo poles sticking out of everyone's house with a radio antenna on the top. So wow. it's just something that's every day, but it also carries yeah. this perception of it's like an old material. It's a, a 
poor man's timber. It's not something we should yeah. use. And that's a perception that's slowly changing. And something I've really witnessed with young people about how valuable bamboo can be for Vietnam. And this is mm -hmm. uh, why you see this market growing here in a big way. But that's still a lot, a lot to change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like everywhere. But it's, it sounds super positive. So this is really um, something uh, which uh, makes me feel happy for uh, the future here. <laughs> and and regarding um, industrialization of bamboo, because of the challenge of not always finding um, like skilled uh, and workers for bamboo. So this is like something you're also tackling, right? Uh, trying to figure ways how to... I imagine building up structures and 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 very cool events, uh, even if you don't find like the the ten or or twenty uh, uh, workers locally, uh, for example. So how how do you go there? How what's your angle? <laughs> uh, well, I work with a lot of different bamboo teams up and down the country uh, to do different things. A lot of different factories mm -hmm. and manufacturers working with bamboo in all kinds of different ways. Uh, one of the factories I work with here is the the main supplier for all the woven bamboo lanterns and baskets for like Ikea. And then another wow. one is making massive amounts of bamboo flooring and in, industrialized bamboo timber for export to places like the U.S. And mm -hmm. you're seeing so many different levels of bamboo manufacturing here. And Vietnam also has a quite large diversity of bamboo. I work with different types of bamboo, depending if it's permanent or if it's temporary, but with festivals, with events, something we often are restricted on is that the structures are temporary and we have a very small time window to set them up. So this forces yep. implementation of methods and designs that have a quick assembly, have a simplistic assembly, and also have the ability to come apart really quickly. And so when you're working on these kinds of designs for an event focus, and then also bring that mindset into an architecture focus, it starts to make you think about how do we work with combining things like steel hub systems to shortcut complex bamboo joinery that can have these really mm -hmm. high price tags. But also, I think it's important to combine kind of luxury and familiar materials with bamboo because it helps a lot change the perception of how you can use it here in Southeast Asia. And that's where I found a lot of success. Uh, kind of like um, marrying up, right? You put some gold next to bamboo, it makes that bamboo look a lot fancier. And that's a constant battle here is changing that really ingrained percep perception mm -hmm. of what bamboo is, is and how you can use it. Perception, I like that. Um, really, another nice hack. <laughs> mm. And and you say basically the the younger generation is kind of they have a very um, a different mindset than the the older generation regarding bamboo because probably the older generation th still is um, thinking of bamboo as the poor man's timber and the new ones see that uh, all around the world uh, people are 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 using bamboo in a very different way and it's not the poor man's timber at all if it ever was kind of situation, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is why I take so much inspiration from uh, companies that are making bamboo into these really high-end spaces. And that's doing a huge mm -hmm. favor for changing perceptions on the material and showing its potential. And I think with young people, especially in Vietnam, they're traveling more. Um, the young generation yeah. is really leaving the country, exploring, is seeing what their neighbors and Bali or Thailand or Cambodia are doing with bamboo, and it's yeah. it's elevating the desire for it here. Uh, the more bamboos in resorts, the more bamboos in these kind of high end spaces, the more that perception of the material is changing, and that's making it way into oh, I would love bamboo floors, or maybe I would like a bamboo house, or uh, I want to use bamboo for my event, and that's why with a lot of the events we do, we also work with clients that are have this kind of economic power to change a perspective that's, that's that's pretty cool i like the the um the direction because you have like a total different um let's say um drive than the the classic um let's say architect 
um, or, or designer, which is a mo more like limited at the end, uh, creating art with bamboo, you have like really like there are fewer limits, seems to me. I mean, probably you do have limits because you have time, you have uh, you have to be able to, uh, as you said before, like those those two uh, things where um, to be able to build fast and then uh, tear down on everything once that the event is uh, over. <laughs> And yeah. um, that for sure is like kind of a limitation because uh, if it's very complex, you have to pre pre build everything, right? And 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 ship it in somehow. Or <laughs> yeah, the events force a, a different set um, and permanent architecture of limitations, and it's it's kind of exciting for me. How do we break these things? And as an artist. I, I love event spaces because it provides the limitation of time, but it doesn't provide limitation in design. And that's why I got mm -hmm. into events uh, because it's a place where you have a client or you have an audience that wants something expressive, wants something different, isn't someone who wants a house and wants a replication of what they see on Instagram or what they see on the internet or doesn't, they, it's, it's an audience where they want something that's really new. It's very yeah. few places as an artist where someone's like, I'm going to give you funding to make a giant head out of bamboo uh, or make a really complex modular structure that we could set up in only one week So and then put away so we could use it again. And then we're also mm -hmm. trying to push events to use structures that are more reusable. So every event isn't just cool. put an investment and then recycle it all or throw it all in the trash. It's Let's create structures that can keep coming back, can evolve. And that's where I brought in a lot of my previous metalworking um, experience. And how do we create hub systems? How do we merge industrial materials with bamboo, but also use more bamboo and use less industrial materials and put them into areas where it creates these kind of design solutions? So I got very drawn to events because of this creative ability for expression and mm -hmm. creating experiential environments and previously as a painter as a sculpture artist i i miss you start to miss art that becomes ephemeral that becomes temporary and i think that's mm -hmm. something that draws a lot of people to these larger experiential events that you see um wonder fruit being an excellent example in thailand um and a leading event in the creative scene in southeast asia as showing, creating these very ephemeral temporary spaces and that you can't capture it through video, you can't capture it through photo. The only way to experience it is to be there and then it'll, it'll never come back. And I think that's a, a very special type of art in a world where everything is so cataloged and permanent and forever on the internet. That's, that's absolutely, um, the, I'm looking if you have it on, on the um, PowerPoint, or the PDF, the the wonder wonder fruit, it's not there, I think, right? No. Um, but it would be yeah. Isn't there? It would be almost at the bottom. Yeah, tiki bar at wonder fruit. That's tiki bar. Uh, I can and, share this. So yeah, that's <laughs> an old project we did for wonder fruit a long time ago, uh, and then more recently we did a. A, a structure for Wonder Fruit, working with Singha Beer. And it was uh, really exciting to be working with a brand that was very motivated to keep the space sustainable. And that's a, a big initiative with Wonder Fruit is no plastics, reduce these industrial materials as much as possible, try to create structures that are reusable. And they take sustainability extremely extremely seriously in all of their builds and, and across the whole festival site. There's no plastics allowed on site. Yeah, you, you have to bring your own cup if you want to get a drink. Everything at Wonder Fruit has a sustainability focus and to try to change wow. this perception of how wasteful events can be. And Wonder Fruit is time and time have proven that this, this is a model that works. And to have major brands in Thailand really adopt this, to follow this sustainability initiative is mm -hmm. a fantastic thing to see. I imagine. And it's it's really about creating experiences and, and like I mean you're you're hacking on different levels there. You're hacking the, the people 
um, visiting the the event. You're hacking the people uh, like doing the event because they're starting to to change um, how they um, how they do the event. If if they really reuse and 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 focus on 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 um, having less trash or no trash at all, less plastic and all that stuff. So that's really I love that. Um, that's really interesting. I, I really believe also like the whole experience thing um, is what people are, are looking for, you know, because at the end, um, what's really unique is a, is an interesting experience. And it's not so much like a, a thing, like a watch or whatever. It's more of a, oh, I've been there, I've seen that, and it felt like this and that. And because of that, I got an idea or because of that, I did then this and that. Mm. Right? So it's all experience based. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's why people go to these events. They're looking up to shake yeah. up their daily life, to find new inspiration, to mm -hmm. get an experience they are not expecting. As the big draw of these events worldwide is to gain and to try to change up your daily life and introduce some surrealism. And I, as an artist, I love working in spaces where people are coming to accept surrealism. I used to do a lot of work in a white gallery, uh, doing paintings and just that white, sterile gallery environment. And I, mm -hmm. I really feel fortunate as an artist to be trying to focus on creating installations that go in nature. And we often mm -hmm. are trying to find these, these kind of installation spaces that are non-traditional, that are working with the environment. And a lot of our installations um, seek to how do we improve or I want to say improve, but how do we connect to the environment the event is at? How do we? That. Yeah, it's reconnecting yeah, to to nature basically uh, through uh, events or experiences. I love that. Yeah, mm. kind of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is why I bring up Wonder Fruit as a great example because it's not just a music <laughs> festival. They do. Uh, mindfulness. They do so many types of workshops on mindfulness, meditation. They do talks on architecture. They do every single kind of uh, education component you would want is is there, yeah, there, along with a diversity of music. And a lot of people well, that work on the event are architects. They're they're not just artists, and they're trying to create structures. They're trying to create architecture, and it's a it's a twenty-eight thousand person festival, so you have a lot of a lot of space and a lot of large buildings, and they implement bamboo everywhere. And it's when I first went there five years ago, that was one of the things I enjoyed the most. Is guests constantly were like, "I didn't know bamboo could do this. I didn't know you could build in bamboo this way." And they get a very international audience. So many of the people that go there, it's the first time they've seen bamboo structures. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a creates a lot of inspiration. And this wow moment where you're like, oh, this is like grass. <laughs> yeah. The moment they, they, they realize, you know, it's like, oh, grass. <laughs> uh, that's mm. funny. <laughs> wow. Um, and um, okay. So uh, if, if, if you would, um, if somebody would ask you now why you, would, you continue to use bamboo, is just because it's one of the most flexible like materials you've found until now. I think I really I'm I'm genuinely attracted to bamboo because it's diversity of use, it's versatility. That's it's an artist. It's very hard to find uh, a material that you could work like you could work as if it was wood, but it has that structural mm -hmm. integrity and strength of steel, and then it the natural beauty of it and how many applications you can work into it. It's this is something that as an artist, I get very inspired with. I'm always looking for a material that constantly grows in its use. And I've yet to hit a bottom of what bamboo can do. I'm always surprised all the time and not just by random things I find across Vietnam and new ways of thinking vernacular techniques that I haven't seen before, but what the international creators are doing with bamboo i feel like it's a it's a material that's very ancient and has so many traditions built around it but is really changing as we apply it more and more into modern building and i think it's really important that 
bamboo becomes a replacement for things like timber as we go on, just because of that, that regenerative harvesting that bamboo is. You, you go to like the pine forests in Vietnam, they're going to be, or the paper tree forests. They're, you know, beautiful forests one year and the next year they're all cut down. But you go to the bamboo forests here, every year they're always going to look the same. They, they're harvesting, but you're never cutting down that whole forest. And that's something that's really inspiring as a material is I don't have this, this guilt upon using it where you would with like an industrial mold making process where the final product looks so clean and beautiful. But if the person knew how much fiberglass and silicone and metal and all these elements that went in just to get to that final product that are now in the trash and not usable, this is something that I find frustrating in an art practice I went I followed for a long time. And bamboo allows me to experiment, allows me to play without this concern for how is my random art piece leaving a permanent mark on the world? And yeah. I'm, and, again, and love you... to focus on things that are ephemeral. And bamboo has this ephemeral quality to it that you know it's not going to be there for a hundred years past when I die and my work is left and I have dozens of bronze sculptures. All my sculptures will fade back into the environment. They're very limited. It, it makes something I love to but play with and think about. It, it, it could survive like 150 years, like if it has a good roof. <laughs> it could, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and but this also already... comes to something that people are always surprised about when I talk to people who aren't familiar with bamboo is how many different types of bamboo there are. And that that treatment mm -hmm. process and how you use it, how you design with it, what type of bamboo you use has a big impact on the longevity of the structure uh, and try to connect it to people's understanding of wood. Because so many people, when you talk to them, they just think, oh, there's one bamboo is just bamboo and there's one type. And it's like, no, there's this exactly. huge diversity. And that's what, as an artist, you find a new type and you're like, wow, this bamboo can do something completely different. And it has yeah. a totally different set of applications than this bamboo I've been working with for years. The bamboo behind me is a um, Philistaceous bamboo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a super temporary Beautiful. bamboo, super common across Vietnam. You can buy a five meter piece for 50 cents. It's, it's everywhere, uh, but it's very temporary. It's very thin walled. It has too much starch, too much sugar. It has a short lifespan. Whereas other bamboo in Vietnam, you treat them right, they can last a hundred years. Yep. And I've seen That's... temples here that have bamboo poles in them that are supposedly a 300 year old temple. Wow, yeah, that, that's really the, 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 the versatility of bamboo, which is like, you have a lot of options, right? <laughs> a lot of options. A lot and of options. <laughs> my favorite types of bamboo to work with uh, come from the South. And it's called Tambung mm -hmm. bamboo. It's um, a strictus, it's a type of strictus bamboo, and it's very thick, it's very big dense. Thick. Like yeah. The strictus smaller, it's a smaller, like five to six centimeters, and, mm -hmm. but really thick all the way through. And then you have a thorny bamboo that grows in the south called uh, guy bamboo. It's uh, mm -hmm. Bambusa stenostasia, and it mm -hmm. gets up to that 12, that 12 centimeter thickness, but in wow. those first few meters of it, it's completely dense. There's no hollow chamber. Mm -hmm. Where then with the wow. barbatus bamboo you find in the mountainous regions of the north, they're very hollow, they're much lighter weight, and they grow to far different lengths. Or you have the very brittle bamboo that comes from the mountains north that's called Nua, and never mm -hmm. would build a building with it, but it makes the most beautiful baskets. It's perfect for weaving. And so this, this is why I enjoy just traveling the countryside of Vietnam because you find someone using bamboo in a different way in every different culture and ethnic group across Vietnam. And there is over 40 of them here. So you have a wow. lot of this diversity of bamboo application depending on where you go. And, and how many bamboo types um, do you find in Vietnam which are really kind of like used by those different peoples? More or less. I've, I've had varying numbers on this. Um, from what I know, there, according to the Vietnamese government, there's over 180 types of bamboo across Vietnam. 
There is a, a monk that I've met several times in the central of Vietnam who is focused on just collecting all of the local varieties. And he's told me that there's over 200, but this is, uh, this is the thing. I feel like it's a knowledge that a lot of people have, but also there's still so mm -hmm. much to understand and explore. One of the wow. things I often have um, when I go and work in Thailand is both Vietnam and Thailand have uh, varieties of bambusa. Um, mm -hmm. mm. the thorny, this very thorny bamboo yep. in Vietnam, we call it guy, but also in Vietnam, there's many different types of guy bamboo, which just means bamboo with thorns, uh, but variations then of that. Yeah. And it depends where yeah. it grows. And in Thailand, you'll go there and be like, oh, I want to be using the, uh, bambusa bamboo. And they go, no, the bambusa here grows. It's super brittle. It's not good for construction. But then you just go to the coastal region near the Mekong Delta and the bambusa that grows there and it's in a totally different condition. It grows very dense and really thick. And this is something I've often found is across Southeast Asia is you have these different ideas and different names and different understandings of bamboo that I'm still trying to unpack. <laughs> the one that's so it's, common it's... is dendrocalamus. Everywhere okay. I go, that seems to be the same. Like the giant bamboo, we most like people kind of know, right? Yeah, yeah. Asper. Yeah, it's what Asper, I find that one of the most common. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, and the also big, and is, it, does it adapt also like on on most um, places? I think it, it can grow really high, but it's it's actually more of a lowland bamboo, but it can grow on thousand meters and and so on. So it's kind of. Uh, but slightly smaller than than it growing on the beach, probably. <laughs> right? Yeah. And also just the density of the material. I, I think mm -hmm. this the material stability of it, there, there's so many impacts. And I just, I'm still learning about how much different bamboo there is. I uncover new things every year and are meeting new some new craftsman in a new village who has totally different ideas about bamboo than the village next door or the craftsman wow. working in the city. And yeah. this is where I get excited because I'm like, I want to uncover that mystery. There's these different kind of understandings of how to use the material mm -hmm. and different names for it, even though it can be very similar. So it never gets boring, basically. I have yet <laughs> to get bored. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And um, regarding events, I remember you uh, mostly are in, in, in Asia, but not limited to that. You've been in, in the US too um, for, for some uh, bamboo related events. Um, is there like, um, probably you have more events, I imagine, currently in, in, in Asia than like in, in the US, but um, is it like growing in the US or um, is it like already so much work in Asia that uh, you don't care so much about uh, the rest of the regions or what's the, the event situation uh, I, like, like globally for you? I think uh, globally, I would say I have no, no boundary to where I want to work with bamboo, but I definitely am very motivated to connect places where bamboo is not indigenous or not commonplace in everyday life mm -hmm. and try to show people that difference. Okay. When I talk to my friends or um, contacts in the US, they have that classic perception of the panda food or it's just cheap material. And that's something where I get really excited with my art is it changes that perspective. People open their eyes to like, oh, this is more than just panda food. This is more than just like a cheap furniture item that is represents a tiki bar or a tropical location that it can be have mm -hmm. all these other applications. One of them that I love to see is how many people are introducing bamboo floors into their house and that becoming really commonplace in the U.S. But it's because of its application, not because people and its engineering properties for being a really high quality flooring and not necessarily because people want to use bamboo or understand what bamboo yeah. is. So I and also feel like it's a big mission in my art to inspire these understandings inspire. and to look at it different. Awesome. You're making the, the planet a better place at the end of the day. <laughs> kind of. I trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trying. I that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um 
So um, I don't know. Do you want to share some of the upcoming events you're you're working on? Um, because probably you have like a huge list from what you've been telling me. But maybe you want to share like two, three. You think uh, <laughs> could be uh, it's, far. It's the oh. beginning of the year, so um, many of these are still falling into place. Uh, I really hope mm -hmm. to be back with Wonderfruit as the structure we just did with them is now in their mm -hmm. storage. It's going to come back again, hopefully in the future. Um, cool. We're looking at projects in South Korea. So it's really exciting for me to go to the ins inspiration location for working with Bamboo and then try to bring some Bamboo creative design back there and connecting with Korean artists again that I know are working with the material. Uh, we're looking mm -hmm. at being in Hong Kong for an installation later this year and potentially mm. working with some Bamboo artists in Beijing and China. So I. Wow. All, all really focused within events. Uh, the mm -hmm. permanent projects we're working on, I have to keep hush hush for now. Okay, but one of our goals um, between you and me is to have a, a think podcast on a live event. So um, this is um, uh, soon to be thing to do. <laughs> um, I'm looking where, forward to that uh, one. Yeah, yeah, man. I I am already uh, visualizing it uh, mentally, so um, can't wait to to uh, at least be uh, virtually there <laughs> and uh, seeing seeing it. Uh, because um, yeah, I mean, uh, if if you can't be there, at least see what's what's happening and what's going there. It's kind of uh, mm. super interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a, a very <laughs> surreal creative spaces. This exactly. is, By this the is way, why I think of. Yeah, no, please continue. <laughs> I was just going to uh, repeat that this is why I think of, of bringing bamboo into event spaces and into creative spaces is so important because people come to these spaces with the acceptance to change a mindset, with the acceptance mm -hmm. to find new inspiration. And the audiences that go to these are really looking for that. So when you introduce bamboo into this experience, it really opens up that mindset and that that perception. Whereas uh, someone just scrolling the internet who might see a cool picture isn't going to get the same it's experience. Not... Absolutely, absolutely. And I I noticed or I wanted to mention that that your uh, lenses glasses are also uh, like fifty or sixty percent <laughs> bamboo, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Wow. These Did are, you, are do... made by a Vietnamese craftsman who studied mm -hmm. in Japan on how to work with bamboo. Oh. And oh. I collaborated with him last year to make these. It's a combination of Vietnamese ox horn with uh, mm -hmm. bar uh, barbatus bamboo from the north of Vietnam. Wow. So totally natural. Not even the the, the front is like uh, also natural, and the the side are, are bamboo. All locally sourced natural materials. Wow. And wow. this is one I recommend just because of you're wearing metal or you're wearing plastic on your skin every day, especially if you have like metal or plastic earrings. It's you mm -hmm. can actually feel how it impacts your skin. And if you are wearing a more natural material like bamboo that breathes, it feels feels great you don't have that stink you don't have that itchingness that the plastic glasses would provide and well, I'm, a, I'm in love with bamboo so i just want it with me daily <laughs> absolutely i hear you there and i think really we're we're leaving this uh, plastic um 100 years of plastic behind us now it was this new time and hopefully it's going to be uh regenerative and, and and smart um materials like such as bamboo which grow back and uh which really are natural and don't have to be like uh, transformed uh, so much like the whole oil plastic um reality <laughs> which we're mm. living still kind of now but we're in this this change so this is um this is super positive yeah i'm also trying to really uh, we... just <laughs> go, sorry. Go. And then what, what do we do with all this plastic? Uh, that's exactly. a, a new material we've been excited to be working with in Vietnam is there's been some manufacturers and companies here popping up with how do we deal with this plastic problem? Because plastic. so much of the world has been exporting its plastic problem mm -hmm. to Southeast Asia in <laughs> many ways. And now you and have a surplus ocean. of 
and the ocean yeah and, <laughs> and the ocean. there's a lot of companies here yeah. figuring out how do we recycle this into new materials so one material awesome. we're starting to work with is how do we work with recycled plastic boards and implement those with bamboo fusing these kind of sustainable mm -hmm. focuses but also with an industrial material cool cool so a little bit like the um like like um there's like this movement in 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 the US where they build um the um earth ships with recycled materials and basically also like using plastic bottles and 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 the tires and all that stuff because all at, at the end it's like a, lots of resources which you use one time and then it's like oh we have to dig a hole again and 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 throw it into the hole where we got it initially right the the oil we mm -hmm. get the oil out of a hole <laughs> use it one time and and throw it back there so um if we're able to use those resources um i mean that would be kind of much uh, smarter than just like throwing their them in the ocean or or burning them which is even worse <laughs> you yeah. know knowing what we know today um so um yeah i mean that's that's the way to think man and to 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 create new uh, realities new spaces um i'm really um very very um thankful for uh, you sharing all all this um ideas and what you've done um and um your motivation also which i think it could be inspirational for for other people who try to better understand um what this whole bamboo thing is about and um uh, that's why we're talking here on the think bamboo podcast also trying to bring this message um um out of our uh maybe um reality into other realities and and um have other people going like oh maybe i should i should check out this bamboo thing <laughs> and and get into this <laughs> rabbit hole and and start uh learning and 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 playing around with it to really see uh, let's say the positive um outputs it, it can have and and will bring for uh, new generations yeah mm. <laughs> yeah this is um yeah <laughs> sorry we have yeah, this no, lag no, this ongoing so we, we yeah <laughs> a little, little out of timing uh, this is, this is yeah. why i get really excited when i'm like oh we're putting bamboo at the world's largest rap concert where we're gonna have cardi b dancing up on stage that's an audience that normally would not seek bamboo or we're going to do exactly. bamboo at this big festival event where people are coming to see their best electronic dj and then mm -hmm. they're getting inspired and exposed to bamboo so this is why i find education opportunity in these kind of creative environments in these festival environments mm -hmm. is an opportunity to access audiences that you normally would not get to inspire or to show that type of material and that's where i have a lot of fun with it because the people you meet at these have very little perception of the material and how how it can be used yeah yeah and, and most people are not aware of like the challenge of of the other materials like be it aluminum plastic um or all those modern materials which are highly available and sometimes cheap but um where the whole um let's say carbon footprint or however we want to call it is like is like immense and that's just like to get it there and once you want to get rid of it it's another story right and all those issues we don't have with bamboo yeah. because it's a grass it keeps on growing once you plant it and the, the and it's it's and as an artist it's amazing every scrap <laughs> is important when you're working with the material every little piece you cut off they're they're if you want there can be a hundred percent zero waste like no waste at all and it's if you go into my studio uh, next door to me right here there's just like bags and bags of random little bit and boo scraps because like oh mm -hmm. when i'm working on this next sculpture i could just keep using the material you can always find a use for every little bit of it you can always break it down i mean it's just awesome i really try to push sculpture artists to use it and i'm just like it is a circular grass that's hollow it's it's a natural growing pipe and it has a strength of steel how yeah. could you not want to try to work with that absolutely so you just mentioned your studio is just behind the wall yeah to the to the right here we okay. uh, in vietnam we have a, a little bamboo studio space where we built a bamboo roof off of it 
but uh, mm -hmm. that's the hub. But then we're working with a lot of manufacturers around us. So we're often in so many different locations when we're producing work, but it's really imagine, nice but... to have a space for it at home. So this is like the lab where you start on doing prototypes and all that, like uh, before uh, working on the on-site, uh, whatever structure or whatever thing, right? Kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have a two it. component. We have the kind of fab dirty lab where we do experiments, we use tools, and then we have our mm -hmm. office space where we're doing a lot of 3D modeling and trying to figure out how do we involve more and more modern processes with the design side. And this is a constant experimentation. This year we started implementing, like how can we implement, implement some VR into our creative process? How can we use AI in our development? And so we've been doing things like scanning environments or scanning faces. And then how do we transition this into a model? And then how do we use that in a weaving process with bamboo and try to work with craftsmen through these more digital applications and find a fusion. And that's where we're wow. like, it's a, I feel like there's a new wave of bamboo discovery happening. You have so much traditional craft, but there's such a new wave of art happening right now, new ways of creating art, new digital applications in art. And I think fusing this with these materials and trying to make new discoveries that people aren't necessarily doing across the world right now, because it's just, mm -hmm. there hasn't been the opportunity yet in history yeah. is really exciting. And that's, that is a, a lot of fun to me. Make, makes absolutely sense. Uh, there are like new tools and the new tools will bring new uh, outputs, right? I mean, and, and you need the, the tools and of course the creative uh, mindset but uh yeah the potential is there <laughs> right <laughs> it's definitely there yeah i have cool. a very open mindset yeah. about this not being put into one track or another through taking a certain type of education and just trying to find out on my own time mm -hmm. i think that's something yeah, I, I think often promote people of how do i get into bamboo I'm like, mm -hmm. but you can take a class, you can go to a professional education system, but really the best way to do it is go find some of it and just start playing with it. Just experiment with it and you'll just make your own it. discoveries. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it's, I think you need to have like, there are different types of, of personalities. And um, from what I, I perceive here, you, you are also the, the explorer uh, mindset personality. So um, I think it works very well for, for those people. Um, but some people need like this um, other kind of, of way of, of, of like uh, learning or receiving new information. Um, but of course, this is much more interesting, uh, exploring and, and, and playing around and, and testing. Um, it's, it's exciting. Um, you can be on the very, uh, like the very first one to, to, to create something new. Um, uh, on le and on the other side, you would be like just replicating what other people have been doing already. So it's kind of, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I did the same thing. It's good, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's not so um, something, um, I, I really understand you um, trying to um, discover uh, what has been there and, and, and people also being in Vietnam, having all that knowledge, you just kind of have to dig around talk to people, ask a lot of questions. And sometimes you for sure find the like treasures of knowledge of, of, of local things that nobody has kind of shared yet. Um, so um, yeah, maybe next time we can talk more about um, uh, uh, local uh, uh, like uh, treasures you found in, in Vietnam and how you think um, that they could, um, be used in other places, for example. Um, that could be something too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Vietnam's also doing a great job of getting bamboo out to the rest of the world, even without me. And that's uh, <laughs> why I feel very excited by the growing industry here. But I definitely yeah. think as an artist, you're in a different position to engage people with bamboo and the material than maybe an architect or uh, a construction worker is. We have a different set of rules with art. You can mm -hmm. think differently with it. You have less limitations. I, and often I thinking as an architect frustrates me because you have to think about so many other elements involved to get True. to the 
product or the design idea or the concept. And with art, True. you can kind of throw out all these restrictions and just think about the material. And also it's a great way to get people to see it in a new light and also to set precedent in countries for how we can use the material because regulating a sculpture is a very different set of rules than if you're building a house for someone to live in. So yeah. you get to break and bend ways you can use the material and then that can jump into future applications that might surprise us. And that inspires potential uh, young architects which work on, on uh, living structures for people. Just like by thinking, like having another um, um, approach to what they uh, classically learn uh, in universities or uh, technical schools, how you can build a house, right? Because why should it always be the same if, if we have new tools and, and the fresh mindsets? Everything can be uh, improved. And yeah. When you're in school, <laughs> they teach you to use materials that are usually very consistent, uh, have this uh, easier way of working with them, whereas bamboo has an inherent inconsistency. It's organic. Yeah. It's no piece is the same. And every pole is this, different. Could be, yeah. yeah, this could be quite a surprise <laughs> yeah. to many designers who are trying to work with it. Even yeah. right now, there's someone contacting me who wants to make a geometric cube system out of bamboo and every piece Ooh. be perfectly aligned. And I'm like, well, you're trying to create perfect ge geometry with something that is inherently not perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which uh, challenging. That could be fun. Yeah, challenging. <laughs> yeah, challenging. It's not gonna get um uh, like uh, uh, it, it. It's gonna really keep on being challenging, and I think that's important to keep the fire on and and continue um working on challenging things in life. I mean, why else should we be here, right? <laughs> yeah. If not to focus on something which really challenges us and where we have a, a passion, mm. passion. So um. Man, I think we we were um we're good. Um, do you have any closing words on your side? Go out there and experiment with some bamboo. Motivate the I industry. Like that. Introduce it into your life, even through big or small things. But I really encourage people to learn more about it. And just do it. Don't uh, overkill yourself with uh, whatever you think you need. You just start. Explore, right? <laughs> yeah. Go out there, get some pieces of it. Find Fantastic. find a way. If you want to use it, just start. Fantastic. And else they can check you on your um Instagram, right? Um you can share yep. the hashtag, I'll share it then on, on the blog post and the link. Um maybe you can spell it out loud. The uh, Instagram. The Instagram. My personal one where you see a lot of the projects that I design yes. and facilitate and conduct is Holland create. My name's Holland. Holland. I like to create. So you awesome. So Holland -O -L -L create -L -L on Instagram. -D. Fantastic. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, don't forget to um, sign up on Think Bamboo on um, also Instagram or uh, YouTube or uh, TikTok, whatever um works best um and um thank you a lot holland for our, all your um inspiration passion here regarding bamboo keep on and uh, talk to you uh, hopefully very soon again again i hope so <laughs> thank you for Fantastic. all the work you're doing <laughs> thank you man bye-bye <laughs>